Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it is so good to see all of you on this Epiphany Sunday. Now, Epiphany is January 6th, and we know that. But this is the closest Sunday to Epiphany. So we are celebrating it today and celebrating the arrival of the wise men. It will be uh, just a great uh, time for us. It'll be the last Sunday we actually get to sing Christmas carols. So let's enjoy while we can. And just, I want to mention we're going to combine CDs and chess leading us again today. And it worked really well last week. Now the CDs that we've got this week, there will be a one stanza intro. And then you'll just move right into the singing. And of course, once we hear Chess's great voice, we just start singing right along with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I am just so glad for the gift God has given to all of us. I just want to uh, bring everybody up to speed on Sandra and Joe, because Sandra dropped this le little letter off to me this morning, and she, uh, she said, good morning. I just wanted to give you folks an update on Joe. I thought it was uh, too late to give me a call last night. So Joe had a fall, and his left wrist and arm was swelling, so Sandra took him to Welland emergency and he was there for quite some time and they uh they're they're just so busy as we know in all the hospitals the result is the x-ray show he has a chipped bone in the wrist and has to go back to welland hospital tuesday uh january 10th uh at 10 a.m so let us keep joe and sandra in our prayers, okay, as uh, they recover. All right, let us take some time now to just still our hearts after another busy week, uh, to still our hearts and allow that Holy Spirit to come in and abide with us and guide us through this worship. Let us have a time of quiet. Most tender and holy God, we thank you for gathering us together on this, um, this Sunday, Epiphany Sunday. We thank you for the light that Jesus brings into our life, the star that shines so brightly, leading us in the way we are to go. We ask God as we open our hearts and ears and minds for your word and your direction today that we would be drawn to walking the path that you call us to, trusting in you, and just following as you lead. We pray all of this. In the name of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Our first hymn will be to take. So there will be one verse or one line of intro. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Charlie. And you know, it's so good to have Jen here. Jen, you're leaving us soon for university as well, right? Yeah, today. Yeah, that'll be today. I was so surprised to see you walk through the door. And you know, Jerusha is leaving us next year. Can you from, and you're going to go out, right? <laughs> Jordan, you're going to have to keep us all together. <laughs> okay, is there anyone else? Well, the storm we had. Uh, 
And you know I'm getting old. <laughs> and I look at all that snow and I say, well, God, you could have cleaned it. Well, thank goodness, you sent me my neighbor. They cleaned all most of the mess. And then the day, it was just before Christmas, uh, when all the power went off, uh, fortunately, we have a fireplace down here that we could gas and uh, gas stove, so we were kind of warm. So Jerry and I were down there to cover it up, be warm, and uh, reading, trying to read with my candle, I'm curious. <laughs> but, anyways, we hear this noise at the door. And the two or three phones were really lost, you know, so we ran up some stairs, and here is my candy daughter, Jennifer, and her husband. What are you guys doing here? Well, we got heat and electricity and well. Yeah? Well, get dressed. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, for a guy, it doesn't take long. <laughs> I'm not saying it took take a little longer than you. We're stepping on the heat and going, come on, let's go, let's go. So, anyways, we get in the car, Sandy got in with Jenny, and I got in with Dart. Dart's just plowed to him, and he's got a four wheeler and same kind of car we got, but it's got a little more food to it. So we went to Welland, and that's why we weren't in church. And we were there, what, three days, I think, before we finally got a road, a, a road that was clear enough to come back to court. And uh, so that was just great. So God was with us, and uh, he stayed with us, and we weathered the storm. Literally, we weathered the storm. <laughs> God is good. Oh, praise God. <laughs> yeah, and I saw your hand go up. Yes, I uh, just wanted to, I'm just very thankful, and God's timing is awesome. My husband's been in school uh, the past year, and he's been to this um, the last term now, and uh, we found out over the holiday that he has a job offer uh, where he can take him to school in May. So I'm very, very thankful for us. That has Praise God. <laughs> and my yes, Sharon. Well, I just came to say this. Those who know me know I have been a football fan in my school days. My chief was talking about football. And and I love the Bills, of course. And and I just have to thank and praise God for bringing uh, Rimar Hamlin to the ordeal of Monday night. It was that was just so terrific. And and also I felt that like when he when he finally came to when it was the doctor's slide and the lights were on, meaning they were afraid he might have come down because he had CPR on the field, those who don't know. He had CPR on the field for nine months. And, and there's always a chance to bring it in. And the first thing he wrote was, who won? And the doctor <laughs> said, you did. And, and he really did. And, yeah. and I feel God won too, because it was so great seeing every new guy on that field. And it kind of united.
God is good all the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Okay, do the children want to gather? Up here, please. to be to you for just a second here. And I know I've shown you this treasure chest before, but I don't know if all of you have seen it. So remember when we started this service and I said, today is Epiphany Sunday. And that is a day that the wise man came to see Jesus. And do you remember what gifts he brought? They brought myrrh, frankincense, and uh, I forget. Gold. 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 Perfect, Grace. So you did excellent. You knew it exactly. And I'm going to get this open for you. And it has gold, frankincense, and myrrh in it. And we're going to look at it and look at the meaning behind it. Now, this, the white, the white sort of rock are frankincense. And they would be burnt in a temple, right? They're like incense. And they have a beautiful aroma. And that reminds us that the wise men wanted Jesus to remember that he is our great high priest. He is the one who guides us to God. And then um, myrrh, which are these dark presents down here, you see them. That was a reminder to Jesus that in the time of his death, he would be cared for tenderly and lovingly by the, the women of his temple. They would come, his friends, and they would put that beautiful thing around him and on him. And then they gave him gold. Ever hear people panning for gold? Yeah, tiny little gold. Can you see that? And that reminded Jesus that he's the king of kings. He's our king and they wanted Jesus to remember all that. And the greatest gift that we can give Jesus is to take care of one another, right? Be kind to one another, our friends in school, our family members, our grandpapas, everyone. And to take care of our face family. Because that's what we all did, right? When it was so cold and washed three out, we all took care of one another here in uh, Wayne Street. And what God also wants us to do, or Jesus, is come together and worship and learn to talk with him like, like he's our very best friend. And he is. He absolutely is, okay? So if you learn to do that in your daily life, that will help you have more peace and joy and hope, okay? And love will surround you. Now, um, after the church service, this is frankincense and myrrh in here that's mixed together. And I use it when I visit people and I pray with them, and I anoint them with oil. And so maybe your grandma, grandpa, or your mom might want to 
come up and open it and you can have a you know you can smell and see what it, it smells like and i would invite the young at heart to do that as well i know you've had other opportunities through the years but maybe if you haven't this would be your time to do it i'm not on the run today so <laughs> you, you can take time all right let's have a prayer loving god we thank you for the gift of your son and the light of love that he brings to our life help us to be that light in the lives of other people we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There we go. Well, as I'm getting the instruments ready, I'm going to tell the young at heart that this song may not sound familiar, but it totally is. Once you hear the tune, you'll say, of course, we did that years ago. Come in and come in and sit down. You are a part of the family. And of course, uh, there's the one line intro, and then we're going to start rocking. I think the kids are so great on their feet. You know, this is. I know. Now, can we find it? Yeah, there's a little stick that's on the feet. Right here. There we go. All right, here we go.
Yeah, your uh, your grand is going down the stairs that way. You can go with her, or you can come with the kids. Okay. Here we go. Thank you so much for all your music. <laughs> And gratitude to God for all that God gives to each one of us. Let us come before God with our gifts to our offering. Our offering will now be received. We stand. <laughs> Just sing it, because you were kind of, you were rolling ahead of the, of the <laughs> And if you're comfortable, just, we know this song, we know this doxology. You want to do it without music from now on? Yeah, we can try it, right? And <laughs> that's all we can do. Okay. All right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today's scripture reading is Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, and it's found in the Bible on page 1008. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where, he asked them where Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank 
please rise for the singing of We the King. Just believe us in it. Now, I would not be surprised if you have 
asked or wondered about the same things in your life. I am also asking these questions in regards to our pastoral charge and our upcoming annual meetings and congregational visioning meetings. Where is Morgan's Point United Church and Forks Road East United Church and Morgan's Point and Forks Road East Pastoral Charge going in 2023. We are not yet completely out of the global pandemic. We are also nearing the first anniversary of Russia's attack against Ukraine on February 24th. So I cannot help but wonder where our world is headed in this new year. Of New Year questions are you asking about in your life and future? And how is finding the answers to these questions going for you? I have to be honest with you. I likely struggle with many of the same questions and conversations that each of you do. The answers are not as clear for me today as when I was younger or even just a few years ago. And the questions I feel right now are more difficult, more difficult for all of us. I keep waiting on this Epiphany Sunday for a flash of insight, an Epiphany, an aha, I've got it moment. But it is not coming as quickly as I want it to. I am finding those conversations and questions all end in the same way. With me saying, I don't, I, I do not know. I just do not know for sure right now. And I do not think I am the only one who does not know. Have there been times when you did not know where your life was going. Times when you just were not sure where you were headed. I think about the wise men in today's gospel lesson and wonder if they asked similar questions or had similar conversations about where they were headed. They did not know where they were going the day they left home. They did not know where they would be the next day, the next week, or six months later. They did not know. They could not see their destination any more than I can see the destination of my life the destination of Morgan's Point United Church, the destination of Forks Road East United Church, or the destination for this pastoral charge and God's beloved world. You see, here is a thing that strikes me about the journey of the wise men. They did not know their destination until they arrived. That seems pretty obvious right now. But I often forget or I 
overlook that. And what if that is true for you and me as well? What if we do not know our destination until we arrive? No wonder my questions and conversations do not get me anywhere. No wonder they all end the same way. No wonder I do not know. But maybe we do not need to know. Maybe the wise men did not either. In one of her letters, Emily Dickinson writes this. The sailor cannot see the north, but knows, but knows the needle can. That fits today's gospel lesson. The wise men cannot see the child or Bethlehem, but they know the star can. Maybe we can never see the destination. We can only follow the star. What star are you following these days? What is the compass in your life? Let me give you some examples of what I mean. I am talking about things like this. The values and qualities that direct and guide your life. The wise women and men whose advice and counsel you seek and trust. The principles and standards by which you hold yourself accountable. The scripture and prayer that shape and form your life the deep longings and desires and callings that energize and move your life forward. The silence and stillness and solitude by which you gain clarity and are able to hear the voice of God. The people and relationships that orient your life and the practices by which you maintain your integrity and authenticity. What if those are the light of epiphany in each of our lives. And what if it is not just one star, but a whole constellation giving shape and direction to our lives? And what if we were less concerned about where we were going and more concerned about the way we are going. I cannot tell you where my life, this pastoral charge, or our world is going. But I can tell you the way I want to go. I can tell you the star I want to follow. I want to go by the way of love, intimacy, and vulnerability. I want to go by the way of justice, truth, 
and honestly. I want to go by the way of compassion, inclusion, welcome, and care for others. I want to go by the way of integrity and authenticity. I want to go by way of gratitude and forgiveness. What about you? What star do you want to follow? By what ways do you want to go? Here is the paradox in today's gospel. The wise men did not know their destination. But they knew the way. They knew which star to follow. And that was enough. That is all they needed to know. They followed the star. And it took them exactly to where they needed to go. Why would it be any different for us? The star knows the way for all of us. Each and every moment of every day. The light of the world, the Christmas star, the star we follow is Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. He is our compass. He draws us near to God and brings to us new light, new possibility, and new direction for our life. This is God's gift to us. And so let us follow the light, the light of Jesus Christ, our compass and our star. This is the word of God for us this day. All thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, we thank you, God, for, for your presence in guiding light in all the activities that are part of our life. We thank you that you bring us together to listen to your word, to receive direction, to sing your praises, and be strengthened week after week after week. We are so immensely grateful. And we ask this week that you help us place our focus on the guiding star, the light of Christ Jesus, who is the comfort in our life. May we follow him and be drawn to your love, compassion, and mercy. We pray for our world today, a world in which there are atrocities, there are leadership, 
there are situations going on in every corner of the world that bring heartache, homelessness, hunger, indignity to so many. May we, God, be lights that shine your love and awareness into these lives. May we be truly your hands, your feet, and your voice in bringing healing and peace to our world. Today we pray for our congregations of Morgan's Point and Fork Road East as uh, we move into that time of year where we are having annual meetings and visioning meetings and all the activities that, that begin a new year. We ask for the light of your life the gift of the Holy Child to guide us in our decision making. May we truly listen on a heart level, God, not worrying about the destination, but just arriving and knowing that you have brought us there in your wisdom and grace. We also pray today for Alan and for Joel and Sandra and their family, for Alan's family as well. We pray for anyone experiencing any kind of illness. We pray for your healing of power and strength and recovery. For those who university students, God, who are traveling the roads these days, returning to their universities, we pray for safety and peace in the travel. Let us now lift up to you prayers from the silence of our hearts. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for hearing and responding to these, our prayers, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I would ask you to rise as chess leads us in our closing hymn, the first Noel.
us always to the destination where we are going. Go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the faithful friendship of our Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. <laughs>